Welcome to our Good Friday service of worship and reflection. We pray that God will bless you as you join with us in this time of thinking about all that Jesus has done for us on the cross. This will be a little bit different from our usual form of worship and so I want to let you know what is going to happen over the next while. There will be no sermon or time of teaching and the main body of the service will be those chapters from John's Gospel, chapter 18 and 19, that deal with the events of Good Friday. Different people from church will read through the story of what happened that day. And as they read, I would encourage you to reach out with your imagination and allow yourself in your mind's eye to take part in these dramatic and terrible events of Good Friday. Let us hear the story of the first Good Friday as told to us in John's Gospel. John 18 When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Sacred head, once wounded with grief and shame, weighed down. How scornfully surrounded with thorns, your only crown. How pale you. Abuse and scorn. How do those features languish, which once were bright as morn? In glory, O Lord of life divine, I read the amazing story, I joy to call you mine. Your grief and your compassion transgression but yours the deadly pain what 
language shall I borrow to praise you, dearest friend? Oh, this your dying sorrow, your pity without end. Lord, make me yours forever, no, let me faithless prove, oh, let me never, never refuse such dying. I'm dying, Lord, show your cross to me. Your death my hope supplying, from death shall set me free. These eyes new faith receiving from Jesus. Jesus shall not move. Whoever dies believing, dies safely in your love. <laughs> John 18, 19 to 27. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple, where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Enath sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, You aren't one of his, of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative to the man whose ears Peter had cut off, challenged him, Did I see you with him in the garden? And Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we walk with you on the way to the cross, as we hear the words of your trials and suffering, we pray that we will be drawn closer to you. We pray that you would take the love that we have for you, so often cold and lifeless, and that you would fan it into flame. We pray that as we listen, you will bless our ears, that they will be open to the sound of your voice. We pray that as we watch, that you will bless our eyes, that they would catch the vision of your kingdom. We pray that as we think about all that you have done for us, that you would inspire our hearts and minds to know and love you more. Amen. John 18, verse 28 to 40. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, 
we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. This took place to fulfil what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? retorted Pilate. With this, he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising.
Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews insisted, We have a law, and according to that law he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me? Pilate said. Don't you realize I have power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But the Jews kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation of Passover week, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Let us come before God with our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Lord Jesus, we thank you that on the cross you opened up a way for us to be made right with the Father. You broke down the barrier of sin between us and paid the price for all that we have done, said and thought that was wrong. Because of the cross, the way is open for us to boldly approach the throne of God, clothed in your righteousness and grace. And so, led by your Spirit, in your grace and power, we bring our prayers to the Father. We pray for the Church of God on this Good Friday, that all who are disciples of Jesus will be given the grace and strength they need to walk in the way of the cross, speaking words of love and truth in these times of hatred and lies. We pray for God's world on this Good Friday, that the dying Jesus on the cross and the living Jesus of the resurrection will draw all people to himself the source of eternal reconciliation and salvation. We pray for the communities in which we live, work and worship, that bonds of love within families and between friends will be healed where they are broken and strengthened where they are weak. We pray for all those who are experiencing their own Good Friday darkness, that all who suffer pain of body or mind will be held by the hands of Jesus, which bear the marks of his pain, and the promise of restoration and resurrection. Heavenly Father, at the foot of the cross on which Jesus died, we offer you these prayers in hope, trusting in your promise to hear us, and in your power, which raised Jesus from the dead. Let your grace, mercy, love and peace surround us, and all those for whom we have prayed, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. 
There they crucified him and with two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, divided them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scriptures might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes amongst them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, woman, here is your son and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood, when the prince of life our ransom shed for us his precious blood. Who his love will not remember Who can cease to sing his praise He can never be forgotten Throughout heaven's eternal days On the mount of crucifixion Fountains open of God's mercy that flowed a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love like mighty rivers poured in A reading from John chapter 19, verses 28 to 42. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. 
He knows that he tells the truth and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture could be fulfilled. Not one of my bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on as one they have pierced. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 70 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Amen. Thank you for taking part in this Good Friday service with us. We close this service with Jesus in the grave. We know that the story does not end there. We know that, although it is Friday, Sunday is coming. And so let us close this service with a Good Friday blessing. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Through the life of Jesus, may you know love and truth. Through the death of Jesus, may you know forgiveness and life. Through the resurrection of Jesus, may you know freedom and victory. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest and remain on you, now and forever. Amen.